try to break down the Office of Compliance Services into a few areas to make sure that we really focus on preventing major violations. One of the things we do is we have a very strong rules education program. For our coaches, they are required to attend monthly meetings. We also provide them with monthly compliance newsletters. And then depending on what type of year our coaches get weekly to monthly memos on any timely or, or sensitive subject matters with the NCA. Our student athletes are required to attend two compliance meetings a year. Also throughout the year they're receiving emails and any other memos or updates that we feel they should receive. With our boosters, they receive information through our season ticket mailings as well as a mailing specifically to the booster groups and within the local community we, tr we send out mailings to businesses and restaurants and just try to update those individuals on rules and with our institution we also have meetings within the institution to make sure all groups are aware of the are, are aware of what the rules are as they apply to them with another area that we focus on would be our monitoring so we are expected to monitor all areas of NCA rules whether that's looking at our coaching staffs and the individuals that they employ, amateurism, recruiting would be the most heavily area that we monitor with looking at coaches' telephone logs when they're out on the road recruiting with contacts and evaluations. We also monitor official visits when recruits are coming to campus. From a student athlete perspective, we're looking at their financial aid and also their employment. And then the last thing that our office really does and focuses on is looking into potential or suspected rules violations. First we would obviously contact the individual if we become aware of something happening with our student athletes and educate them on what the rule is and how it applies to our student athletes. Then through the investigation if we felt that something did happen that was a violation of rules we would go ahead and work with whether that was a team or an individual and report that violation and then take, take care of it in a timely manner. Local businesses and restaurants do have a responsibility to make sure that they are following NCAA rules and regulations. If something were to happen with our student athletes and a local business or restaurant, there could be some consequences for that student athlete, whether it be repaying the, the value of the benefit they received or depending on the amount of the benefit they received, whether or not they would have to sit out certain competitions. So we just ask the local community to make sure that they treat student athletes just like they would any other member of the community uh, or an MSU student in general. Some of the things that businesses aren't allowed to do would be to provide free or reduced cost services for something where a fee would normally be applied. So whether that's dry cleaning, auto repair, cell service, our athletes are expected to pay the same price for that service that as I mentioned a member of the public or a general student would pay for. Also students aren't allowed to receive any type of discounts on any purchases they might make at a local business. So if a local business was having a promotional event and MSU students could receive a certain discount by showing their student ID, our athletes could receive that discount but they could not receive anything um, more than that discount. Also student athletes are not able to receive anything in exchange for their autograph or providing a business with a picture of themselves, for example, they couldn't sell their autograph to a business or receive something in return, whether that's a free service or a discount. Student athletes can never promote a commercial entity or business, so while it's certainly permissible for our students to be out in the community and be at businesses and local establishments, they cannot actually promote that. So if a business was having some, some sort of event, it would be okay for our athletes to attend that event, but they could not use that athlete to promote that event. Also, uh, student athletes can work for any business in the community. There's no restrictions on the number of hours they can work or the time of year that they can work. We just ask all businesses to make sure that they are paying our athletes for work that they're actually performing and at a rate that's similar to other employees at the business with like abilities and skill levels and that our student athletes aren't receiving any benefits that other employees aren't receiving. And we do monitor our student athlete employment, so if a local business does employ one of our student athletes, we would be in contact with that business to make sure that they are aware of the rules regarding employment with our athletes. But as I mentioned to begin with, the most important thing is just to treat our student athletes like you would any other member of the public or a member of MSU student body.
if a local business is interested in being involved with a team or hosting some type of event, they would just go through our sales and marketing department and contact them. They really do our community outreach. If there was some type of special programming a business was doing, maybe not so much about the business themselves, but they are supporting a charitable organization, Angela Monti and our Student Athlete Support Services, she would be the individual to contact. She oversees all of our student athlete outreach when they go out into the community and she records that and sets that up so she would be the main contact but if a business ever has any questions as to what they could provide to any of our student athletes or prospective student athletes they can contact the Office of Compliance Services which we're located in Jenison Fieldhouse and our number is 517-432-5510 and we also have a link on MSUSpartans.com